voice repeat of myself but yeah uh so my name is tanmay uh i've been into product design for the last 7 years on an official manner and before that 4 years of freelance so i started out designing when i was in class 10th itself and i'm be, i've been freelancing from that time onwards uh i have had the opportunity to work on like products from different subdomains and flipkart is like i guess my fourth company prior to this uh, i was leading the design team at gana.com and yeah that has been like more so like a generalized journey i would say and yes there was things which got me interested into design because by the time i was coming out of college like as most of the students here would be coming out and at that time ui ux was not a very well known field at that time it was just graphic design and it was like a journey which i've seen okay from graphic design how people started recognizing a ui ux talent and how the learning curve for those people have changed over time so yeah lovely can you tell us about your education background as well what did you study to move into this field sure so i did my bachelor's in technology in it field and i actually come from a very like i would say a college from uptu and uh, its name was uh, lord krishna college of engineering it was in noida and that is where i started off my career like just in the fourth year i i would like say i did not go to college that much in the fourth year i was mostly a part of an organization helping them grow their brand and their product and that was the last six semester sorry last six months where i did not visit college that much but i was yeah learning on the job itself lovely that's great it's a brilliant to have like your experience coming on board to tell us about it so thank you so much for you know doing the session over to you you can uh, i think share your screen Uh, should I share it to all panelists? Ah uh, yes, I I think you can share it to all attendees as well. Uh, I don't have that prop, uh, option. Oh, yeah, you can just share it directly. Okay. Okay. So mentees, if you are able to see the screen, just type yes in the chat section so we uh, know the students are able to see it. yeah they are able to see it lovely cool uh so like as i mentioned i am like a product designer at flipkart so one thing which i like that up arrow that i have actually put uh is more of like okay a lot of times people these days think of product designer as a digital products designer but a lot of people tend to believe that more of they are more of a pixel pusher kind of a role so that's why i just like put that arrow that i'm a product solutions designer because what i've seen is like from my experience with different product teams different business teams and other teams which are in an organization we help design solutions we are not just the pixel pushers we are not just making things beautiful we have to find a critical problem set and then target it to make a solution and i guess like at the very bottom i would just add some links that if you like whenever you get a chance if you want to follow me or like connect with me it's i'll be glad to connect with you guys uh so just moving on to the next version so currently at flipkart i actually le i'm leading the team in the departments of supermart which is flipkart's grocery division as well as flipkart quick uh which is more like something in let's say in our terminology in dog fooding phase and it will be like hopefully being releasing in the next 3 months or so and this is more of a i would say a rival to dunzo and swiggy's uh, swiggy stores i would say so this is that domain as well as i also look at certain uh, categories browse experiences so if you are searching for something how do i as a product designer make the user's life easier by allowing them to quickly find their products is where i also look at optimizing those experiences for the users uh so yeah so just a brief like why i actually got into design as i mentioned at that time when i was actually coming out of college we did not have too many opportunities firstly for ui ux secondly people did not understand what ui ux was it was something at that time only apple designers used to go with the title of ui ux designer even google did not have ui ux designers at that time so uh, one thing which i learned actually looking at uh, apple's human interface guidelines was the 
keen observations they are they were having towards the user's experience as well as what a user behaves and how they were actually uh, able to put words or like put uh, an experience based on what the user might be feeling emotionally physically what they might be looking for what can be the best kind of help they can provide is what actually got me interested in product design because personally i've been more of a person who looks at things or looks at problem statements and tries to find solution to those so that is where i got interested in the product design along with that i would also say that i was a developer in my first company and sorry to say so but it was something which became very boring to me on a longer run i did not want to write keep on writing codes but some people are very good at it uh, some people find creativity there so it's a like like i was a thumbs up for those people as well i won't say that product designers role is the key role itself because a developer is equally important to execute those plans and so yeah that is where i actually got enticed into this industry of product design and there is where my journey started with a very small startup that was into e-commerce and at that time obviously i as i mentioned i was coding using python and other ui ux things were something that my i would say share on my at that time company ceo pushed me towards to understand and learn those aspects and that is where i got hooked so so generally speaking as i mentioned that product design a lot of times these a lot of times a lot of companies uh, believe that they are more of a pixel pushing job more of a design kind of a thing so this drives me or brings me to the point of how do people perceive design actually so this is going to lead us into uh, flipkart and the experiences i had with kana so as i mentioned when i joined the industry it was a very i would say turbulent time for the design industry itself we were just coming out of the age of okay front page has ended now the design world has starts with dream weaver and all those different tools were at that time present so i did see a lot of people were still into the thought process that a ui ux designer was supposed to develop as well and in the initial days that was one of the job requirements that we had but slowly we saw that okay the organization started to realize okay ui ux people are more responsible towards how can i optimize a particular funnel and by funnel i means let's say conversion conversion means payments and stuff and how can i optimize how can i sell things better to a person sell things better to a user in a faster fashion so people of ui ux industry can focus towards that find critical problems or find new find minute problems as well at times and fix those in the long run so that as a whole the package of a funnel improves and there is where the divide between a ui ux developer and a ui ux designer started happening and that is where like one of the ways how a company looks at ui ux uh, another way a company actually looks at ui ux is more like let's say considering a case of a startup startups main objective is i need to make this product very valuable to the market get it as much traction as possible so that the investors would put money in so their a product designer's role is helping the ceo helping the business leads sort out things at the very beginning of things and then help that product establish itself in a way that a investor would be interested into buying a particular share in that in that company so so as the company size grows on a startup looks at it in a very much like okay i need it to drive my product when it comes to a medium scale company where the investor is already there then it more sub, it, it's more about acha how can a ui ux team help me improve my business revenue that is where the business revenue aspect comes in and obviously in a larger company like flipkart we have to uh, be very much aware about our competitors like amazon or i won't say mintra is a competitor it's a sister company uh, let's say like snapdeal how are they doing what is improving in the, on their end because here we are like stakeholders we have to keep in mind that a small mistake from our side will gain the other company a lot of business as compared to flipkart so a person or let's say a company's way of looking at design is changing and i would say it's also in an evolving phase where ui ux in like i would say by till last year was more into visuals uh the way a thing is present on web 
and from 2019 onwards, there has been a good amount of push towards artificial intelligence, assistance, and augmented reality, virtual reality. Those are the new horizons for UI UX and how the, the experience can be powered to the users. So that is a very basic fundamental about how people currently are perceiving design. And just what I'll be presenting in the future words is like, I would instead of saying, Ki, okay, I do this, 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 I'll take a myth or a fact that you guys might be aware of. And then I'll try to optimize, okay, is this true? Is this not? So most of them are false to be very fair. Like you can actually read it, read them out itself. So the very first myth that the in, like industry has is experience is all that matters. This is a lot of companies talk about, okay, we drive into experience. We only talk about experience. Our product is like user experience centric and all those different kind of, I would say designer friendly words. But in reality, the thing is a user experience team is not the only thing that they care about. They also have a development team that they need to be worried about a business team, product team, revenue team, user research team. And at times when you are working in a startup, or you're working in a medium scale company, the importance of each and every individual team here changes based on time. So as I mentioned, a product team and an experienced team with a, with a, let's say, user research team would be working very heavily when it's an initial kind of a very much like a startup product. But as things start to improve, people or the company start focusing more towards business teams and revenue teams than the experience of product. So then the balancing factors start coming in. And obviously, as time goes on, as companies grow, things again take a turn. And obviously this is an ever evolving kind of a cycle. This is more of a business metric because every business or every product out there is there to succeed. Nobody wants to fail. So just saying the fact that any product or any company is just driven out of business or let's say driven out of uh, the user's needs would be a false way of putting. They are solving user needs, but they're also trying to optimize their products. So that I would say is how the myth actually doesn't line up completely. Uh, along with that, uh, a lot of times we think that, okay, user experience design or UI design is more about creating designs, creating beautiful interfaces and stuff. So as I mentioned in the very beginning, uh, one aspect of it is yes, finding a problem statement, solving it, and then trying to get the very same experience that you designed out then in the market. And that revolves around and includes a lot of different teams. It's not just the user experience team's responsibility. So we have to work together with the product team and the business team firstly to understand, okay, if let's say I'll take the example of uh, hyperlocal or quick. So what we are doing is if we say, okay, I want to deliver in 90 minutes, I'll also keep need to understand, okay, what can, I, what can the logistics division actually help me with? Is 90 minutes a good enough promise? Two people need it in 90 minutes or two people need it in 45 minutes. So those kind of discussions, heated up arguments, I would say at times it reaches that level that we have to put users experience needs, product and business comes from the product mindset. And that's more of a back and forth kind of a discussion where we try to find the middle ground between finding that experience. And then obviously we need to switch from the business team to product team to the research team where we start analyzing the market, finding, okay, there was X amount of data that the product and business team gave us. Firstly, is that X amount of data correct? If not, what can be the new outcomes? Secondly, is there any additional set of information I can take into account before crafting the solution? Then again, whatever research happens and whatever data comes in, then we feed that across the business team, product team, and in Flipkart's case, the revenue team, and then try to find, okay, firstly, will the business be able to sustain these kind of losses if there are any, or if we can convert it to profits, will the user be able to say, uh -huh, I want this service. So after a lot of fights in a very realistic scenario, and after a lot of design iterations, we come to a UI, which uh, I would say does not satisfy each and every team's needs, but we try to create on the experience side, a product, which is good, enough to solve a user's requirement or the need that they might have in the market. And then obviously it's more about getting people in the room together, fighting it together and say, okay, X, Y, Z things are we picking in P0s and then P1s, let's plan how can I optimize for you? How can I optimize for you? And 
so on is the difficult discussion. And at Flipkart, we, as I mentioned, we try to be very much like clear about our strategy and does, do not want to create any kind of a problem. I would say, okay, let's say if I put an icon, let's say for example, I did one mistake, I would just like blatantly say so. So when I was in into e-commerce, I just removed a menu keyword alongside a hamburger icon and just put the hamburger icon uh, uh, like right there on the interface. We saw, let's say, at that time, a 29% user dropped instantly on the hamburger menu because they were not able to relate icon to the menu keyword. So we are like all those discussion points, okay. From experience side, we try to be very sure, okay, what can, what needs to be there. Secondly, what kind of minimal information can help me drive the business. So all those communications happen before we even reach the development team. Development team, uh, I would say like, a higher stakeholders we get into the meeting room once we have decided on a solution just to understand, okay, is there a bigger bottleneck which can happen or which can occur if I roll this out to the developers as a handoff? If there seems to be any, then our responsibility is more about finding ways around those uh, snags or bottlenecks with the help of development team. And then finally, when everything concludes and obviously the product team pushing us, key, okay, timeline meet Karni and all those things, then we hand it off to the development team and then also helping them through the structuring and the overall development of the entire life cycle of the product. And then at the very end, checking the entire experience altogether so that nothing which is not a part of experience that we planned goes out in the market. So that is the overall journey, how it looks. And it's not just about creating designs, it's about collaborating with other teams. It's about also understanding the developmental aspects and keep on like keep because development is also something which keeps on changing. We need to keep ourselves updated. And that is what helps us communicate better because every team here, product team talks numbers. Sorry, product team talks features, business team talks numbers, development teams talks code, revenue team score talks about money, user research team talks about analytics again. So you need to understand all those different languages because once all these people are in the room, it's our job to basically make them sign off on a solution, which we feel with data backing is right. So that is where a user experience team comes in, binds everything together and helps push things through to, the, to an execution phase from an ideation phase. Uh, so as I mentioned, your yeah, experience design ends at making solutions, not exactly. So once the experience design, let's say for quick, we designed a solution and it's already out there in the market. These days I'm again in discussions with the business team, product team and revenue team, because by the time the actual product would become live, we are already planning for the next release. What needs to be there. We already found out flaws before even got rolled out in the market. And we are already working towards improving those as well as if a business team needs to change certain aspects. So let's consider a case of, I'm quite sure like a lot of people might here might be playing PUBG Mobile. So PUBG Mobile did not have a, I would say battle pass or what do you call it? Royal pass in the very starting, but they saw, okay, there's an opportunity. I can gain extra bucks from the users. To be very fair, that's how business or like that's how Tencent games might have come across that. But then opt in, Optimizing it, okay, we are giving too much back to the customer. Maybe we need to reduce it. Maybe we need to make them put in extra effort. And all those minor tweaks is something that came out of the first pass learnings. So that is a similar way how Flipkart or any other organization operates, where we already take learnings from our first product, from the dog pooding phase, from alpha, beta, whatever phase you call it. Every company has its own naming. And from there, we take those learnings and start implementing those. And obviously while the time, while the product goes in the market is like for two to three months, we again look back at the data before releasing the next release because we want to be sure that nothing on the initial release is going to create a bigger problem or bigger threat to the business in a very realistic scenario. Because as I mentioned, every business wants to succeed. So, that's, as I mentioned, so this is more like, okay, okay we talk to product team, the business team and revenue team. Then we are currently working with the research team to find out if all the requirements are as per what needs to be there. Then we again put those things back to the business team, product team and revenue team 
and then we design solutions, iterate, and then obviously take it to the development team at the very end. Uh, yeah. So I would say the fourth myth is more about uh, something which I hear a lot of the new joinees at Flipkart asking. And this is something which I feel is something that needs to be talked about in the industry at least, is experience design isn't how things get developed. So this is more of a myth from the designers end. This is not a myth from, let's say, a global community end. It's more about designers' personal opinions and personal thought process. So uh, yes, like as I mentioned, the UI UX concept of a designer knowing how to develop and developing the solution was there in the very starting. But nowadays, a lot of companies have moved towards product designers or UI UX designers owning the experience aspect of it. And when it comes to this question of, do you need to know about development? So see, if you don't know about development, still you can actually be successful in the market, but it becomes that much more harder for you to communicate to a development team. And the experience which I've gained is like, since I've been into Python, I've been into HTML, I've been into Android, iOS, and all those different development areas. One thing which helps you is like, okay, at times a developer might be very new to the system or he might be feeling, okay, okay I can't do this in the short timelines that I have. You knowing certain stuff or you can suggest certain stuff can help him actually achieve an experience. Firstly, which can help him be recognized in the team itself. Secondly, it is always appreciated. It's not that you are saying, I'll tell you. So nobody takes it that way in the industry. So it's good to know development because even when you're designing, let's say if it's a UI screen for WhatsApp for very for like random example, a tile of chat, the way you design it is actually the way a developer would develop it. So if you structure things in groups, that is more of a structure that a developer would have with devs or would have with different, I would say, uh, component uh, holders and stuff. So in order to be very clear about a lot of different guidelines, so a lot of these different channels, let's say HTML or iOS and Android come with their own limitation factors. Everything is not like hunky-dory, I would say in the current things. Uh, everything has its own pros and cons. So having a good amount of knowledge of what is actually achievable versus what is actually just beautiful are two different things. So if you make something which is achievable very easily, then obviously that's not just like you are helping your design team as well, uh, sorry, development team as well. But if you can still know the foundations or the limitations of the entire ecosystem of development and also create something which is really innovative, which like I would suggest that I would say awards, AWW, ARDS is something where you see a lot of these uh, great innovations while keeping inside the limitations of technology is what actually gains you recognition, not just in the company, but in the overall market, in the community, in the overall design hemisphere, I would say. So that is always a good thing to have in your arsenal if you have that knowledge. And it's also, as I said, necessary to keep on honing or like shining those skills because just like design development also evolves the only thing is design evolves very quickly like these days neomorphism is the new pause like the new thing that people are talking about and development i would say it's still running on git and stuff so you need to be aware of what developers are doing uh finally i would say a myth another one which are when companies say we are design driven, what do you like think of, the, of that? As I mentioned, no company is design driven. There might be different company sizes which are giving more importance to design at different sectors. So if there is a startup, as I mentioned, they'll take design and product very seriously. If there is a bigger company who are just moving into a new, uh, let's say domain, let's say hyper-local or quick, as I mentioned, is something that Flipkart is going to try out very new to the system for us at least. So we are there to take risks, but we also have to take risks in a way that are not going to cause firstly a brand kind of a 
problem because we don't want to relate ourselves that Flipkart it does not provide good service in 90, 90 minutes and they promised me. So we don't want to come across that. Secondly, also is like we want to be able to experiment in the market in order to gain that extra set of learnings, that extra set of knowledge from the people. Okay, does the solution really work? Do people really want things in 90 minutes? If let's say, for example, very good example, it's an iPhone releases and that iPhone is on sale at Flipkart. Now, when you buy it, if I say I can deliver it to you in 90 minutes, how many percentage of people would buy it for 90 minutes versus how many percentage of people would buy it to be delivered up two, three days. So that is all the different sectors where we had to research, come up with different data, how many people said yes, how, people, how many people said no, work with our user research teams. So here in our experience in this particular product, we were able to, I would say, explore a lot more breadth of different solutions we could offer. While when it comes to, let's say, the core experience design that I also undertake is, there we are very skeptical about a small change that goes out there because we don't want to take risks on things which are already established. So that is where a small thing change can actually, like on those fronts, a business team is much more, uh, I would say, given more importance as compared to a design team. Whereas things which are related to a newer initiative is where a design team is actually allowed to go out as an open play field, try out new things and find solutions which can actually, firstly, beat down their opponents, Amazon and Snapdeal, and secondly, earn a good amount of share for a company. One thing I would also say is like at Flipkart, it's more of a team thing that we do. As, so one thing which I see while coming to Flipkart, uh, when I joined, uh, we had designers, and it's not that every designer is the same. Everyone has a different forte. My forte is into business and all those data analytics and very critical thinking. That is where I put myself in. Uh, we had Rahul Chakraborty previously uh, at Flipkart. Now he's with Swiggy. So he is very good at visual design. So every designer comes with their own forte, comes with their own learning. So how can we help each other while teaching like small bits and aspects? Okay, you can do this. You can learn from this. This is my, a lot of times, let's say, uh, we discuss, okay, what is your design flow or design cycle? So then the person, okay, I do mood boarding, then I go with wireframes, then I put information architecture, then I put the wireframes into UI. And then the mood boards help me uh, to refine that UI in a way that looks visually appealing. So that is like how we communicate or how we like transfer our knowledge at least to the team members which are out there in our team so that they can benefit from it. And since a lot of them are coming from different uh, backgrounds and we try and be very much open to a community like key okay any designer can join us who has a passion for design so that is where we try and help them learn while also if they have a very good feedback we are always open to feedbacks so i guess like a very good example is some of the recent joinees that we had uh one of them actually pointed out like to be very fair they pointed out your uh, I would say lifestyle experience sucks. So that was a clear word they put, but the way he told that story of why it is not that up to mark, how can it be improved upon is where we were able to take a lot more insights about, okay, this point seems right. This point does not seem right. So we need to find out that gold in the haystack or something kind of a thing where we are trying to find that small, small pieces to piece together, present it to the product team, then obviously get their sign off and publish it out there. So that is how we help each other grow. And that's, that has been, <coughs> sorry, that has been the way we are operate with, within our team at least. And that was about it from the experience side of things. So if you guys have any questions, so I'm open to any questions. Like if you have any concern, if you have thought about any kind of a concern point, just feel free to ask me out. Lovely. That was, that was very interesting. Uh, I can see a couple of questions uh, that have come up. So, uh, Mentees, if you have any more questions, you can post it in the Q&A section. We will be looking into uh, the question aspect now. Uh, so, somebody asked, can you please share about how did you get, how did you get a job in this particular domain? Okay. Uh, 
So when I actually came out, as I mentioned, UI UX wasn't there. I was joining a company as a UI developer and my profile actually started as a UI developer. And uh, I knew certain things about UI uh, being into freelance. I knew, okay, there's a user interface kind of a thing, which is currently there. Experience was not talked about. And it was more of, let's say, a UI developer job role, which was out there. I had interviewed with them. And it was like quite a fun kind of interview. I won't say I've ever had the opportunity to have such interviews ever in my life again. So they asked me to draw a logo and then they asked me to explain why the logo was there. And that was based obviously on a keyword that they had. And obviously they actually hired me as per what they tell me, told me afterwards is based on the thinking which I had behind the concept. They did not actually want the logo as well. They just wanted me to explain the story behind how I can like design something, have a story behind it, and obviously factors to back the design itself. So that was where I actually was able to join into the UI development role. And I would say the UI UX shift towards a UI UX designer role or the product designer role is something which was much more decision-based, I would say. So as I started off being a developer, it was like mostly good days being a developer of UI as well, but something which I realized soon enough in my career was if I am designing a solution and I'm also developing it at times I, or the person who is doing it, like if they are not very much in the same mood on a, let's say not even mood, I would say the same uh, execution level on an everyday basis, then at times they think, okay, yeah, it's not complex design nature, else I would not be able to achieve it. So that starts pulling you down from a designer's role of finding a solution to making things which are much more easily achievable. So that is where in the second company that I joined, uh, even the CEO there tried to push me towards a role which is much more towards finding a solution rather than thinking about how to execute that solution. So that was how I actually joined the first okay. one. Uh, thank you for sharing that because, you know, we have a lot of designers, even the UI, UX, or graphic de designing space who probably think that, you know, uh, putting just a logo out there is what matters. But I like that you mentioned that it's a concept that goes behind it as well, which a lot of people don't know about. Uh, lovely. So uh, you also have a background from, uh, you know, uh, computer science, right? Uh, so moving into like the designing space, because the misconception about product designer is nobody really knows what that job role is and what skills do you require? So is it into the tech aspect or the designing aspect or is it like the collaboration of both that, you know, students should be working towards? So uh, to put it very fairly, uh, it's more of a collaboration of both. I wouldn't even say both. Uh, it's about finding a product solution. It's also about knowing how the execution of that solution is going to be made. But the critical thing, I would say like if, people can actually relate to it very quickly as uh, at times the product team can say, yes, huh, I like the solution. Let's push it forward. But you would be blocked from the business side. So talking, knowing the business language, knowing why a business metric is important, how to achieve that metric and how not to, let's say, uh, let's say, for example, if somebody says like Ghana, I want to increase my daily active users, which is more of a, okay, okay on Monday, if there is 22 million users that are active today, I want to increase it to, let's say, 23 or 25 million users. So how do you make or suggest changes where by obviously knowing which element is going to hit which metric of business? And then it's more like a doctor doing an operation, knowing which nerve is going to damage what system or which nerve is yeah. going to optimize what system. And then obviously knowing the language, how to explain it to the other teams, because a business team does not understand design. If you put designer words in front of them, they'll just like push you up out of the room and make you work again. So <laughs> knowing the unders like knowing the insights of business, product, design, development, everything comes in handy. But the mo more major important thing is business and product along with design understanding. Okay, but I guess you learn like on the job because you communicate and you know network with the other teams as well. Uh, so I, Sahit is also asking a very interesting question. What would you suggest for freshers who want to work as a product designer or a UI UX designer? So any skills they should be working on, uh, you know, practicing with, with in college so that they're ready for like the outside world. So uh, one thing like 
coming out of college, one thing which I feel is quite common these days is people or the students are very much into either the creative visual sides of it or they are into developmental side of, side of things. If those people want to switch to UI UX, it's much more of an easier curve as compared to people who are not uh, like implementing those kind of things, maybe like a developmental kind of an experience or maybe a creative kind of an experience. So for those people who are actually working towards it, firstly, a design team out there as a fresher, what we like to see is, okay, what is this kid's forte? What is the forte they bring to the table? Is it more of a visual nature of design? Is it more of a like very good, like very nice, clear thought process thinking? Let's say how to execute a solution. Even from a developer, how they structure things is how we analyze, will they be able to solve a problem? Because the problems out there, we have to break it down into smaller fragments, then challenge each and every stone by stone, and then try to find, okay, what is the best optimized solution? When it comes to people who are not exposing their skills, uh, maybe they are doing things in their personal time. They are exploring, they are learning new things. They are attending workshops and stuff. So for them, it's like the people who are uh, putting things on dribble or Behance or things like that. They are firstly, able to put th things into the market and say, okay, this is, let's say, Tarun Kohli or whatsoever. This is Tarun Kohli and this is me. I design these kind of things. They are already putting it out there and they are practicing those principles. So it would be better or let's say it would be much easier for the other crowd to just experiment, try out the concept. You don't have to be 100% right. Nobody's asking you to be, but you just need to experiment, put those things or thought process into design. Keep learning because as I mentioned, design is more for like everyday learning. I'm still learning till this date. And uh, it's where you can't just say, okay, okay, I'm done learning. So keep experimenting. And I guess like for the other industries, it's much more of a firstly knowing what design is. And a lot of times I would say like even people coming from BBA and stuff, they are very good at business and administration. So like they have that knowledge set. If they can gain a visual insight about how to break down this, let's say a problem and make a solution, you don't have to be a beautiful pixel pusher. You just have to be good enough to solve a problem because pixel pushing and all those different aspects is something where a lot of these new design kits are already there to help you out. It's not something that's required from a UI UX designer. The main core is finding that problem, solving it in a way which is best optimized because like I would say there was an Apple video, which I remember is there are a thousand ways of solving a problem, but only one of them is the most optimized one. So find that. Brilliant. Uh, so Dhanushree is also saying, what kind of design tools do you use on an industrial scale? Okay. Uh, tools, I would say it's not that quickly changing. Uh, these days we are using sketch and we are also using uh, Envision, Zeppelin. Zeppelin is majorly for handoff between designer and developer, but slowly things are migrating towards Figma. So our teams are like a lot of different Indian design teams are shifting towards that. So it's just like a, previously people were not thinking of design that a bigger crowd or let's say people would like to collaborate on a single file or a single project. It was more of an audience that came from Photoshop. So yeah. things were developed that way. Figma puts things into perspective. Okay. Firstly, people can see live what is the realistic update, what is happening in the project. That makes the communication between a product team and design very clear, as well as the collab collaboration aspect can help you, let's say, put a placeholder text in while your text or copy team can take care of that copy without you having to be the mediator of saying, Acha, you give me this copy, I'll replace it there. That's something which we try to avoid these days. So I would say tools are something which will change. We are going to experiment with Framer as well. And Framer, like most of the people are very much like, I would say, under, like aware about the prototypes and stuff. Envision, uh, I would say, principle and all those tools. Framer is something which we are trying to gain realistic feedback from the user because Framer is actually built on React. So pushing something which is very close to a final product is going to gain us better insights from a user research. So that is, I would say, where things would be heading in the future, I would say, in the next one to two years. 
Okay. So both Akansha and Sahit are asking, uh, how should we start uh, UI UX as a career? Like how to approach internships or land a job as a product designer? Okay. Uh, firstly, as I mentioned, uh, people with a portfolio get that upper hand. Uh, other thing is networking because a lot of these companies hire very much in a closed network. Uh, they take applications, but obviously, like as you might know, there are a limited set of companies, but there are a lot more applicants coming to UIVX these days. So you need to find that upper ground. Do you need to market yourself on Instagram or other profiles to make yourself visible in the crowd? Do you write a very good cover letter to gain that extra set of attention? Do you put a portfolio which shows a very good skill of your you, like user base thinking? So it's more about gain attention and there are different ways of doing it. So portfolio, cover letter, networking, I would say. And also like at times it helps if you can just like start pursuing a person, start engaging with them on any social platform. Show like a lot of times people don't put uh, creatives on their banners and stuff or dribble and profiles. A lot of times they are busy finding solutions. Uh, that happened with me. I'll be very frank. That happened with me. I was busy finding solutions. I did not put too much things out there in the market. So you can still communicate, talk to people, engage because you have been solving a problem. You have a mindset which can ask critical questions with other people cannot think about. So if you are able to engage in such kind of a, I won't say banter and such kind of discussions, then firstly, that person knows that you're very much intrigued about design and solving problems. And that person, maybe like if they are, let's say design manager for a good firm, they can help you land uh, at least a internship role, which you can actually show or like put your foot in and say, okay, I deserve this job and obviously convert it to a full-time job itself. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, Veshni is also asking, how can beginners get into freelancing? Uh, again, what skills should be focused on and kept in mind in this competitive world? That's a very tricky question. Uh, I would say that firstly, obviously, have a portfolio. Uh, so in the very beginning, one of the things which I remember my grandmother telling me, uh, that was, even if you can make like if you can make a better thing and if that can gain you an extra set of attention do it for free even like i guess chris Doe is preaching the very same thing these days so it's more about say if you are designing a solution let's say for whatsapp and if you say that okay group polls should be there and this is how it should be there and you just make that solution put it out there as a case study publish it to whatsapp ceo or whosoever is the design head of their department then obviously you are getting traction. Firstly, people will start no noticing, okay, what is this case study? They'll start understanding about it. Coming back to the point of how do you start? Firstly, is, as I mentioned, practice. You need to understand the different concepts. There are different, a lot of design rule sets that we need to follow. There are a lot of things which we intentionally, intentionally avoid. And with things, or let's say UI taking its own course, you don't have to think about the UI aspect of it. A lot of different teams are already working towards it. You will get your own time after 10 to 15 years to create your own system, publish it in the market, gain praise, and obviously like sign off, like give autographs or something. But right now it's more about solving problems. So if you want to join the industry, find a critical problem, which is there in the market, create your solution. Don't think, yeah, this is not good enough. This will not work in the market. Find a solution, publish it on Medium, give your reasons behind it, back it up, share it with the community. You have so many different channels on Facebook. You have different channels on Slack and WhatsApp and whatnot. Twitter as well. So if people see that you have thought of, let's say out of 10 things that you've written, if even one of those hits, it's already a success because that is where the people would start coming to your articles more often just to see if in the new article, you have found a very different perspective of solving a problem. So that is to gain attention. Second is obviously, as I mentioned, practice on a different level, put things out there. A minimal set would also do because internship, landing internships, landing jobs takes a lot from that because when you're going to go to a company, first thing the HR would ask you is, do you have a portfolio? And these days, UI UX portfolio is not visuals. 
you can't give your dribble profile and say okay this is my portfolio you need to give a case study why did you come up with the solution how did you come up with the solution what are the other solutions you tried why they did not work so you need to analyze and put those things to words so it's more like while you're creating a solution keep writing a diary because that's your case study at the very end like end of day also okay so sai is also saying how do you know whether you are a product design person or more of a visual designer it's always been a hard process for her so she wants to know uh, how do you figure out between the two okay uh so ask yourself one simple question i would say like just put it this way uh when it comes to uh let's say any local vendor any local shop that you visit kirana store whatsoever they have a hoarding most of them and most of them have like okay xyz thing this is the address bye bye blah in that essence on that hoarding what did your mind think of first did you think of acha isko visually aise kar sakte the it would have looked way better or did your mind think why do i need this xyz information can i remove it this is not serving any purpose so if you are thinking in the latter kind of a period you are more of a critical thinker you are thinking about why an information is necessary because our job as a ui ux designer is where we have to like we come up with we have a lot of data and then we have to fight with product teams business teams to reduce that clutter because at the end of the day we want the limited set of information to be that much impactful to make us or help us get that extra set of con, uh, conversions if you were looking at things okay this can be visually made better it's still a visual designer role and from there you can actually build yourself towards okay asking the questions of why this information is necessary so it's not that you can if you are a visual designer you can never enter the ui ux industry you can you still can okay a lot of times the ui ux designers go to a visual role so it's not something which is un- unheard of in the market so if you find any way of connecting with design perceive it and slowly build your knowledge towards how to ask those critical questions which can help you move toward a transition towards the ui ux role okay so uh, coming to my last question a lot of so, students here uh you know if they want to move into the ui ux role or the product designer role uh they want to know what projects they should be working on like you know inter- like obviously internships or recruiters are always going to ask them okay show me your portfolio what projects have you done so is there any specific projects that you know you would uh, suggest the students work on when they are in college or you know applying to these uh, organizations so i'll keep it very much open ended uh the way at least we analyze at flipkart is uh there are different ways of solution as i mentioned virtual reality augmented reality ai assistance and all those things are now these days are current like a new normal for the ui ux industry if you find a connection with any one of those go ahead because that's the booming industry and any kind of a solution that you craft there is going to gather more attention let's say if you don't connect with those still there are other things let's say iot is there which was like the i would say like internet of things you find devices out there you find google nest and stuff still not outdated still a very good thing from the perspective of very much going into ui ux ki okay i did a ui ux refresh of this until and unless you have a very strong case there of doing that ui ux refresh we don't consider it that heavily so find a new problem solve it if it is connected to a latest booming technology that's very going like that's going to gain you much more attention but if it's even if it's not a booming industry if it's a very good solution it asks the right questions it will still attract attention okay all right uh, thank you so much tanmay for you know sharing all your insights because i think a lot of them you know wanted to know about how to move into the field and we've always heard of these job roles so when we are we're in college we don't really know what are the job roles in the industry so thank you so much for sharing the insights into skills and how to develop your portfolio i'm sure uh, the mentees would have found it very interesting and uh, informative as well Uh, so many so we hope you were able to answer most of your questions that came up as well we are putting a feedback form so we get a better ideas to you know what are the upcoming sessions uh, you all are also looking for uh tanmay do you have a couple of last words for the students sure so i would say like 
the industry will firstly never get tired of having new designers because the more the designers, which I've seen is the, a new perspective of looking at a problem. At the end of the day, I see designers moving towards more of a product management role with the th way you handle things. And there is always going to be a new, let's say, booming technology out there. So I would say like, just try out. If you are a problem solver, try out user UI, UX design or experience design or visual design and build your way towards an experience design kind of a career. It's not that hard. Everyone can do it. Just like, like get started, I would say. Definitely. It's lovely to see these upcoming fields like UI, UX design, which, uh, you know, companies are looking uh, for people in this particular field. So thank you so much, Tanmay, once again, you know, for sharing your insights. A huge thank you to the uh, QFIS team also for, you know, collaborating with us and, you know, bringing amazing mentors on board. Uh, if you want to connect to uh, any of the mentors, you can uh, head out to the QFIS page, uh, the website, and arrange for a call with the mentors as well. Uh, thank you so much once again, Mendy. Thank you once again, Tanmay, for the lovely webinar. Thank you. Thanks for joining, guys.